payments kind of thing. Uh, your character, um, you know, is going to be based off, well, okay, dad's there to kind of back you up, or, um, hey, this is a good guy, he's had credit cards, he had a car loan, he's made his payments on time, you know. It's not necessarily, debt necessarily isn't a bad thing, but mismanaging it is what will get you in trouble for anything. Um, can't tell you how many times, even right out of college I did a, a mortgage brokering job for about six months doing home loans before I got in the farm credit. And I can't tell you how many people spend way outside their means and rack up huge credit card debts. If there's any way you can not do that, I know they're for emergencies or something, but that, that's the first way to get yourself in trouble and kind of wreck that credit. If, you know. so what, are, like, what are some good ways to build credit while still in college? Um, you know, if you do any traveling anymore, I don't you know how you travel without a credit card kind of thing. Um, so, you know, it's likely, I mean, other show of hands, how, how many people have a credit card? Okay. Yeah. I thought that would be more. But what do you say? If you've got it, the main thing is <coughs> your payments on time. Even if it's the minimum, you know, I'd recommend using it and then paying it off every month. But if for some reason you can't and you're carrying it over, you know, you're paying huge interest charges probably. But you know, make your payments on time. Because what the credit bureau will show you, and a good question is, basically your, your payment history. If, so from the time you had your first trade line of credit <coughs> to the time you're you know, six feet under and you know, room temperature, you'll basically have a history of all your credit lines you took out, all the loans you had, all the credit cards you had, all the, all the everything like that. And that's going to show how many 30 day, how many 60 day, how many 90 day lates, and you know, what your revolving balance was, uh, you, are all your cards maxed out, I mean, do you manage it, or do you abuse it? It's kind of, and then there's a score anywhere from I think 4 or 450 all the way up to like 850 I believe. So if you see your score, that freecreditreport.com or whatever, I mean, 7 to 720 or above is something to shoot for. You know, is a good thing there. So especially starting out when you don't have... All right. Uh, what's... I, well, you can finish with what you're saying, but I was going to ask about, like, uh, utility bills and whatnot for, like, housing, rent and stuff. How does that affect... Does it affect your credit score that bad? Or, I know it does a little bit, but by paying late on those... Yeah. Supposedly, it, it depends if your um, landlord reports to the credit bureau, or what will probably get you is if it's a cell phone. Like I've seen cell phone, I've seen medical, um, I can't say that I've ever seen a utility collection besides a cell phone mm -hmm. that would actually or hit a credit bureau. Mediacom, stuff like that. I didn't know if that did it. But that might. Okay. That might. Yep. Nice. So. And where that will show up, do it. not necessarily in the trade line, but it will show up if you don't pay the bill and it goes to a collection or it's charged off at some point. That will likely show up. So forever, that will show up there. If you've got some bad credit, maybe behind on some loans, some bills, something like that, the main thing is get them current and at least make the monthly payments and stop the lates. That's, that's what will hurt you. Some, some people are like, well, I had bad credit, but I paid it clear off. Well, the next month they were late, so they just shot themselves in the foot. I mean, make the payments on time, and at a minimum, just do the minimum. Um, so, we're, yeah, we're going to look at a balance sheet, at a cash flow. Uh, look. How about taxes? In fact, like if you're late on taxes, would that affect it? Or? I don't know if that affects your credit. Uh, oh, like income tax or yeah. tax? Yeah, income taxes. Um, at the point in time they go to a judgment or a collection, certainly. Yeah. Um, well, we're in school and whatnot. I guess I'm trying to not build up debt. Um, is it bad as far as the fact that I'm not charging things and building my credit score while I'm in school? Or how does that affect me when I get out and I want to get a loan? Um, if you don't need, you know, to borrow money, I wouldn't. You have to pay something, to, I mean, you're paying interest to borrow money, if that's what the question is. But, yeah. Um, I, I would not say you're penalized by not borrowing. I didn't know if not having a score, because I don't tend to borrow money, it will hurt me when I get out and do borrow money. I... I wouldn't think so. I mean, at a minimum, 
having maybe a credit card that you pay off every month is kind of what I did just from an ease of you know, buying things online or traveling or you know, not having the right to check out for everything. So, uh, no, I, I would not encourage debt to build your credit score. It's, well, it's counterproductive. Can, well, it's not like serious You may hear debt, some credit cards just sad. like in general, just... Like you all is it like a credit card? Go get a credit card just yeah. so you can get a credit score. Yeah. And pay your bills. I mean, basically everybody has a debit card. I think. Yeah. From, I mean, if you don't have a credit card, you have a debit card. Yep. Essentially the same thing, but it comes straight out of your bank account. Yep. And I think if you got a credit card and basically just use your debit account, pay off your credit card every month, and just make sure you do that every day. That build credit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So any other questions? Yeah, like I said, main things I'm going to want when you come in to, to get a loan. I'm going to look at balance sheet. I'm going to look at cash flow. We're going to pull your credit. And then, um, you know, if you haven't had a job, you know, there's no sense getting a tax return. But all those things kind of mesh in into our software. And basically, we're looking at uh, you know, how much capacity there is for you to repay the debt. Um, you know, is there a cushion in your margin? And uh, you know, how risky is it? Based on, you know, is everything you own, is everything on the farm, you know, have a loan against it, or do you have any equity in it to fall back on, or to not have additional debt to service? So, um, I don't know, maybe some of what I got is maybe too in depth, but uh, like I said, if it's a land loan, we're going to want 30 to 35 percent down. Um, I've got a brochure over here of some farm service agency FSA. Uh, beginning farmer program payments. Um, the, the main one being the uh, land purchase, which some, might be something to shoot for uh, eventually. It is, you know, if you want to buy that 40 or 80 off grandma or dad or something, um, that has only a 5% down payment. But 5%, rather than you come in, I get all, get the whole loan from me. I loan you 70%, you know, you put 30% cash in. Or, most people usually can't do that. But, that FSA program, you put 5% cash in. I do 50% loan at 20 year fixed, whatever. FSA kicks in 45%, takes a second mortgage at like one and a half to three or four percent. So it's a huge interest savings. It's capped at like 225,000. But that may be one to look into. Um, that's about the best farm service in the FSA program as far as helping you purchase land that I've come across. So. Um, I already own 70 acres. If I wouldn't come in and buy another farm and get a loan from you, would you still expect 30, 35% down? Or would you lower that down? Good question. So, Cody, was your name? Yeah. Um, so, uh, have debt against the? 20 acres over that day. Okay. So, Cody's got some equity in his current farm that he owns. So, on his balance sheet, he's going to have a positive net worth. He's going to have some equity there. When he goes to buy that next adjoining 80 or something, and for round numbers and easy, but we'll, we'll just say, you know, he's got his current 80, three fourths paid for, and he goes to buy a new 80, and I'm going to want 30% down. Well, I'm going to look at mortgaging both farms, and across both farms having no more than a 70% loan. So I'm going to look at cash and or equity as one and the same. So in that scenario, you could go probably buy that neighboring 80, assuming similar values, you know, and assuming, like you said, if you don't have that much debt on it, uh, you potentially could just pledge equity. So you're, you're levering your balance sheet, you're levering the equity on your balance sheet, rather than having to come up and cough up 30% down to that other farm. So absolutely. Um, some lenders don't do that. To me, it's a combination of cash and or equity or Good question. So, and that's where you want to get to. And that's where a lot of these guys, everyone's like, well, how do these guys buy an 8, 10,000 acre farm ground? Well, they maybe, you know, don't have a huge amount of cash that they can throw 100,000 down, but they've got a tremendous amount of equity, you know, on their balance sheet on the long term that they're going to lever, you know. So, if only that makes sense. Quick thing though, can't that leave you in the bottom zone? I mean, if you have. I, with the market values going up with land, say equity is going to be going up. So, say you maxed out on loaning or buying.